All right, today I'm joined by linebacker of the Buffalo Bills, Lorenzo Alexander. What's going on, Zoe? Nothing much, just enjoying the offseason. Obviously, we've had OTAs. Um, actually got a minicap coming up, um, and then I'll be headed off to Arizona uh, just to kind of finish off the process and get ready for training camp here soon. And that's what I was going to ask you. You know, what type of things did you work on this offseason? I know it's going to be your second season in this right. defense, and obviously last year was a big change because you're going from primarily a rusher to a guy that was out, out in space a little more. So what type of things did you work on this offseason as opposed to last? Um, you know, my focus was just really just to get stronger. Um, I wanted to really emphasize um, my pass rush. I worked a lot on that um, because that's where the coaching staff really directed me um, going into my second year. I uh, really want to utilize me there more often. I think last year we were trying to learn each other. How would I fit in the scheme? What is my skill set? And how could I, I best be used um, you know, first, second down versus third down? Sure. That was one of the areas, just getting a, probably a little bit bigger than I was last year. Um, I felt I was fine in space, but sometimes when you get there in the, in the three technique or even rushing off the edge, I mean, you're dealing with 330-pound uh, linemen. So I wanted to carry a little bit more weight, a little bit more of a punch uh, at the same time, keeping that, that speed and quickness that's going to help me uh, play off the ball linebacker on first and second down. And that's a great point because some of the film we're going to look at today is uh, the Bills double A gap looks. And a lot of times last year in these type of looks, they moved you all over. Sometimes you're an edge rusher. Sometimes you're that three technique and a two-point stance. I mean, right. they really had you all over the field. Is that a role that you're going to play a little bit more of this year? I think by the end of the last season, we really found a niche for myself as far as moving around. Like you said, you know, really implementing at that three technique where I'm working with Kyle Williams. You know, obviously we've added Trent Murphy and Star uh, this year as well. So see me on the edge, maybe working inside with some of those guys. Um, that's the great thing about having such a uh, deep um, defensive line that I can be moved all over the place and allow other guys to utilize their strengths as well uh, because of my versatility. So I look forward to doing that, coming in wave, staying fresh this year, and uh, getting a couple more opportunities. That was probably my biggest disappointment from year one to year two is, you know, coming off of, uh, you know, career high sack numbers. And then because this just happens naturally when you have a new coaching staff come in, they're not quite sure how to use me because I am, I am unique as far as being able to do multiple things. And, um, you know, I, I think I had like 200 less rushes. Um, obviously, we made the playoffs, so it worked out great. But I definitely want to be able to get out there and help our team and impact the game even more this year and uh, cause more havoc. And I'm looking forward to being able to do that. In the off season, I know you guys like to unplug a little bit and just kind of relax. So how many weeks off did you take? Um, did you watch any film at all? Did you sneak some film in behind the family uh, at all in the off season? Well, a couple of things. You know, I don't really take too much time off from a physical standpoint. Um, you know, I grew up in the Bay Area, and Jerry Rice was probably one of my favorite players growing up. And that was one of his things that he said uh, lent him to having a, an extended career was never allowing yourself to get out of shape uh, because you have to work so much harder to get back and then and get more gains. So what I try to do is just try to maintain um, my physical condition. Um, obviously, I'm not as training as hard as I'm leading up to training camp, but whether it's being Pilates, some like running, some cycling, doing some of that stuff year round and then ramping up, getting ready for OTAs and then eventually training camp. Uh, from a, men a mental standpoint, I did watch um, some film this year. You know, I obviously watching some of the guys that played played in this system, uh, watching some Luke, uh, watching some Thomas Davis, um, and just seeing how they continue to make plays because I think I, I can always add that into my game. And uh, this year I feel much more uh, confident and secure about playing off the ball, um, especially first, second down, my eyes, my keys. Uh, my footwork, uh, even some of my coverage, I can see the difference in OTAs from some of that film work and just having another year in the system. That's great. That's great to hear. Obviously, year two, a lot more comfort in the system, as you mentioned. So with that said, our comfort zone here at The Athletic is in the film room. So let's go take a look at the film. All right, we're in the film room now. The Bills are down six points to the Carolina Panthers. The Panthers are in the two-minute drill. There's a minute and 10 left on the clock in the second quarter. The down to distance is second and 10, and the ball is on the 48-yard line. So, Zoe, first of all, I want you to, you know, kind of go over um, what kind of coverage that we're in here. It looks like pre-snap, the Bills defense, you guys did a really good job of disguising this. They almost made it look like it's man coverage, especially up right. towards the bunch with Leonard Johnson and Trey Way up tight versus the trip set. Then you got Gaines kind of often soft and hide down in the box. And hide really, to me, 
is what confuses Cam Newton post snap. And we're going to get to that. You guys are going to drop into Tampa too. So kind right. of walk me through if, uh, if you're a linebacker, Preston Brown, Ramon Humber uh, here, and you're dropping into coverage in a Tampa two set as an outside linebacker, start with what's the depth that you're trying to get to uh, in this coverage? Yeah, well, I think out of your base set, uh, usually trying to get to 10 to 12 yards, um, but that can all change based on the situation. Right here is a two-minute drill. Um, they do have one timeout. So as you're actually coming out, you're actually reading through the three because they, they are able to throw maybe a quick pass and quick game, get out of bounds quickly. And as a linebacker, you don't want to just run the 10 to 12 yards uh, if Cam is throwing the ball right now. Sure. And uh, that's part of why we were disguising, trying to create some indecision in his mind, having everybody up there. As you said, he's really not quite sure pre-snap whether we're playing man, cover two, we're a big cover three team, yeah. or we could be bringing a zero blitz. Um, so it really makes him have to think and disguise and really just have to play as the ball is snapped. And um, I think that's why you see here he holds on to it a little bit and allows me to uh, get home um, on my secondary move on the spin move versus Williams on the top of the screen there. Sure, definitely. And you're right. You know, the disguise really set this play up. It looks like a single high set, and as soon as the ball snapped, you can see Cam peeking the both sides trying to get a read on this uh, coverage because, again, we got Micah Hyde down in the box here. And, you know, pre-snap, you saw um, Calvin Benjamin, actually, your teammate, he kind of pointing out, uh, you know, that Hyde may be blitzing. And that's actually something you guys did run later in the season where Hyde or Poyer would drop down and blitz. But that's a, yeah. another film film room session for another day. But it is a very confusing play because then Hyde drops into the flats, basically replacing EJ Gaines, who normally would have that, um, you know, that, that area. So it was really nice pre to post-snap disguise. And obviously caught Cam Newton off guard. And uh, you bring him down uh, for the sack to set up third down. So we're going to take a look at the tight camera angle. Kind of set up, uh, set us up here, Lorenzo. Obviously, we're showing that double A gap blitz. I mean, what type of protection are you expecting when you guys show this double A gap look? Um, well, there's different ways you can do it. Um, obviously, um, Carolina faces this a lot in practice. Obviously, Sean McDermott having a lot of history there. So, um, you can get slide protection. You can get um, where they essentially leave the most least dangerous man alone so they can slide left or right, which they would oftentimes leave the end man on the line of scrimmage where that could be me or Jerry in this case. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes you can also get 5-0 possession uh, where the five offensive linemen uh, have five bigs. They'll mic one of the guys, whether it's Preston or Ramon on this, mm -hmm. um, and then the back would have um, the other guy, the six. The other, the other inside all, backer. Right. all decide to come. Sure, yeah, and a lot of times, what you, as you mentioned, you'll see that uh, running back just be stacked. Sometimes they even stack him right into the gap so that it's nice and easy that he's not meeting him at depth uh, where the quarterback is going to set up. So that's a great point. Now, as a pass rusher, uh, obviously on this play, you guys dropped a Tampa two. These right. two inside backers are bluffing, as is Hyde for that matter. Uh, so what is your mindset as a pass rusher? What are you expecting? Are you expecting a one-on-one? -on -one are you yeah, expecting I'm a Exactly. I'm expecting a one-on-one because -on -one, um, you can hear their line calls when you're lining it up, which sure. will kind of give you an idea uh, whether or not they're going to slide it or give you a 5-0 and have um, a one-on-one -on -one, uh, with your potential tackle or guard, depending on where I'm lining up. On this play, I was definitely expecting a one-on-one -on -one with Williams. Um, in our scouting report all week, um, we all we wanted to start with power and then counter with, with speed. And um, my best speed move is either a chop or a counter spin. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of times, especially on this play, I was able to get a, a good long arm morning with my inside arm, which knocked him off balance a little bit. Right. And then he was actually about to regroup. Like, he stops my initial move, but I knock him back. And he's regrouping right now because I created yeah. some separation. And he's about to hunker down, trying to absorb, like, I'm about to go to a bull. And then right here is when I have him. His, his body is leaning forward, and I naturally feel that spin move wrap around, have a high elbow with my left arm to kind of lock him in place, and it puts me right where I want to be, right in the quarterback's lap. Yeah, you damn near executed the ice pick there. That was a really nice move. And I want to go back to the beginning because that was, you know, a heck of a combination, obviously your secondary move. But I also want to ask you, now, as a, as a pass rusher here, would you say power is your go-to move, uh, you know, on the season? Because, I mean, obviously you played along the D-line, pretty much every position along the D-line. So you wow. have – you know how to win with that type of leverage, with that type of strength, and, if, and you're really good with your technique. So you are able to win with that. Would you say that's one of your 
uh, go-to moves? Yeah, speed to power, power to speed. Um, I think it's just a, a combination to be able to switch things up. I think that's what makes um, good rushers. You have your toolbox, yeah. um, and you have your, your tools that you use all the time because you can't use every single thing. But throughout the game, you're setting a guy up. Right. And, uh, you know, power, power, power. Now he's hunkering down, and then that's when you can go finesse. Or you're going speed, speed, speed. And he's trying to run back and beat you to your spot, and then you turn it into power, and you're able to pull him into the quarterback. So at this point in the game, I had gotten enough rushes to where I felt comfortable the next time he, he, he sat down on me hard, I was going to be able to have a spin move there available to me. Right. Now, as, as a pass rusher transitioning from your – your primary to your secondary move. Uh, are your eyes on the quarterback here? Do you, do you have an idea where he's <laughs> going to end up in, at the top of his drop, just so you have right. a, a good idea? Because like, obviously you felt it there. Did you have an right. idea that he was about to set and hit that back foot? Yeah, I mean, we, when we go into the week of preparation, we have an idea whatever quarterback st- um, likes to set up at. Um, Cam actually steps pretty deep, you know, nine yards, and then takes a hitch step up to eight. Uh, some guys are shorter than that, but we'll game plan that just to have an idea because as a rusher, you have a feel that you don't want to get too high. At some point, you have to counter back, especially with a mobile quarterback like Cam Newton because in this game, he did escape a couple of times up inside the B-gap and get some first down. So you want to have an idea and a feel for that um, so you don't continue to run upfield and really get nothing done, even though you may beat him around the edge. A guy like Cam steps up and big, strong guy can either throw the ball or take off on you. Now, were you expecting a specific set from Williams here? Yeah, I mean, this is the set that we, we look at all, all week. I mean, he, he's pretty good as far as staying true to who he is. Um, trying to stay square, uh, really retreating. That's kind of like the new thing in the league, vertical setting. Yeah. Uh, where guys, you know, are kind of just getting depth and trying to absorb you. So you're trying to take the fight to him and make him feel like he's – getting uh, uncomfortable, maybe moving back a little too far. And I think in this one, like I said, I was able to knock his balance off just a little bit. And he thought I was going to come back with power again and was able to transition off of that with, with the spin move. Also, another thing in this, um, I probably heard that the center was going to uh, slide to Kyle Williams. Sure. And that essentially lets me know that I have an inside move because Shaq likes to go um, a lot of power as well. And I know the guard is not going to be able to fan to me because that's sometimes – you know, the indecision in the end's um, psyche or whether or not he wants to spin. Because you can spin, but sometimes that guard is sitting right there to hit you in the mouth and sit you in your butt. Right. And the confidence of knowing that since the center was going away from me, the guard wasn't going to be able to come off. No, definitely. That's a great point. And actually, it was my next question. So you hit it on the head, um, especially, you know, having Shaq lost. And obviously, he's he's a, a base defensive end, but he offers some power, which is why you guys kicked him inside a lot. So for him to occupy that guard, take that one-on-one with the center sliding, um, to the defenses, right? Yeah, you definitely had the one-on-one and, you know, it did a great job of sensing that uh, Cam was hitting the top of the drop. And obviously it was a, you know, really big play, especially, you know, with the, the two minute, under two minute drill. Um, so it was, a, it was a really nice sack by you. It's one of those things, you know, when you come in a league, you may not have that secondary or, or third move. Uh, obviously you've, you've, you know, you're a wily vet at this stage in your career and to have, uh, you know, your toolbox, as you had mentioned, uh, have that spin move at your age, man. I'm pretty impressed, Lorenzo. No, I appreciate it. Yeah, you know, it's just an old basketball move. You know, I grew up playing hoop, thought I was Barkley. <laughs> that's really where it came from because I didn't play football until I got to high school. And uh, that was one of my go-to moves, you know, go to the basket like I'm going with my left and then spin back. And it's just something that has always felt pretty natural to me. And I always try to utilize it as much as I can as part of my game. Uh, it was a great play, and again, um, those double A-gap looks was something that Sean McDermott brought over from Carolina. You guys used a bunch of it last season, and uh, this was one of them where you guys actually bluffed him. Uh, you confused Cam Newton pre to post snap, got him to hold the ball just a little bit longer when they're trying to push the, the ball down the field vertically, and obviously you set that tackle up really well uh, using your power, getting him off balance, and then just sensing and, and, and spin moving back inside to, uh, to bring Cam down. One of four sacks on the year uh, from this double A gap look. So with that said, Lorenzo, uh, you know, moving forward to 2018, what are you most looking forward to this season? I'm just looking forward to um, really just growing from where we, where we left off last year. Obviously we made the playoffs for the first time in, in 17 years, 18 seasons. And um, I don't think anybody was satisfied. Uh, we felt like we left a lot of things out there on the field, especially defensively. Um, where we could have probably extended our postseason play, but it didn't happen for us. So I know a lot of guys in the locker room are hungry and ready to get back. And 
as a defense, we don't want to be able to lead this team, um, especially this year. You know, we have Josh Allen, we have A.J. McCarron, we have Nate Peterman uh, really trying to solidify that quarterback position. And until that, you know, somebody steps up there and really takes the reins, it's going to be up to the defense to lead this team and really put our offense in positions to win games. So that's the way we're looking at it. And then personally, I just want to take another step forward and uh, just continue to get, you know, continue to increase my game, my football IQ to help my football team win, whether that's rushing the pass or playing off the ball. I just want to be as effective as I can and really just enjoy this time and have a lot of fun because as I enter my, my year 14, I know it's coming to, to an end soon. So just maximizing the day and trying to win it every single time I have the opportunity to go out there on the field. Yeah, we, ex- we uh, expect that from you. Obviously, uh, you're at the tail end of your career, as you mentioned, but you're still playing at a heck of a level right now, and uh, you're still maximizing everything you got, and that's great to see. Um, finally, where can we find you on social media? Uh, plug your foundation. Let's, let's hear yeah. what you got, man. Yeah, mainly on Twitter, uh, at one man gang 97 um, That's where I kind of post a lot of my stuff. Um, on there interacting with fans, uh, good and bad, I guess, sometimes. But I like to have fun with it. Um, this conversation, whether it's, you know, football, talking about me, basketball, social issues, it's always fun to kind of just engage people and, and get everybody's perspective. Um, and then as far as my foundation, um, LorenzoAlexander.org, it's the ACES Foundation. Uh, we just had a big bowling event this past weekend, uh, raised an additional probably 13 grand. Wow. That I will be uh, issuing to, um, to South Park High School football team as well as the Bell Center through different initiatives and programs that those, those both organizations are trying to do. Um, and just trying to use my platform of being in the NFL uh, and helping impact in the communities that I play for as well as my hometown of Oakland, California. Uh, Because we have a youth camp coming up June 23rd in Alameda uh, for youth kids, um, you know, from grades first through eighth. And so if you have kids, you know, definitely look on my website, LorenzoAlexander.org, click events, and then sign your kids, sons and daughters, you know, football. And then we also have a cheer portion if your daughters rather rather do that. So it's a fun skills camp, and I always have some of my local friends come out and uh, help me out with that. So it's always a good time just trying to give back, you know, live right. And uh, just give glory to God every chance that I get with the with the blessings and gifts that He's given me. No, you definitely have blessed a lot of people, uh, not just on the field. We're talking off the field, and you know you've done a lot with your uh, foundation and charity events, and um, obviously in and around Buffalo and, and across the country. And we do appreciate that. So I do appreciate you coming on and taking a few minutes out of your day to break down film. Till next time, sometime during the season, possibly we can get you back on and uh, yeah. do this again. Appreciate it. I appreciate you. Sounds good. Eat.